Hello and welcome to Rogers TV Presents. I'm Julia Batchelor. Today, a very special tournament is happening here at Beacon Hall in Aurora. It's the fourth annual Soldier On to St. Andrews, a golf tournament that allows ill and injured military men and women the opportunity to play golf, relax, and swap stories with their fellow soldiers, as well as sponsors and supporters will be raising funds to send eight soldiers to Scotland to play at the historic St. Andrews Golf Course. Among the 100 participants here today, 22 are soldiers, each on their continuing road to recovery. And thanks to partnerships between Beacon Hall and the Soldier On program, they can enjoy the benefits offered by golf to help get them a step closer to their goals. Major Jay Faco, recently retired, currently is senior manager with Soldier On. Not only has he seen the transformative effect that sport and recreation can have on a wounded soldier, but he too can attest firsthand to how important sport is in aiding healing due to trauma. So Jay, you're the senior manager with uh, Soldier On. So talk to us about this program. It started in 2007. What was happening at that point that um, the military saw a need for a program like this? Well, it was uh, a result of Afghanistan and all the ill and injured members that were coming about out of, out of theater. Um, and it really, you know, under the Chief of Defense Staff, Rick Hillier at the time, he saw a, an outpouring of support from the Canadian public. Um, and, you know, the, the more that we can do with, with soldiers uh, to help in their recovery, he wanted to set up programs and adopt programs that, that would, would support that. Um, so uh, the founder, or one of the founders was uh, Greg Lagasse, who still works with the program, but he was working with the Canadian Paralympic Committee at the time. He came, uh, approached the military, and they were really looking from a selfish, not like a selfish, but looking for recruits for the Paralympics. Um, and they started the, the, the movement of, you know, using sport in the rehab of, Making the of, connection. of ill and injured members. Yep. And this isn't a new concept. It was back World War II, uh, born in Stoke Mandeville in the UK, when they used sport in, in part of the recovery. And, and that, grow, that growth and snowball effect is now what we know of the Paralympic movement of how big that, that's become of you know, ill and injured members using sport in their recovery and, and adapting to that new normal and, and moving forward in life. So we just reinvented that uh, and the Canadian Force has adopted it in 2007 and, and, and housed it and said we're going to do this to support the men and women who served the country and sacrificed uh, and then we've just been carrying it on for the last decade. Well you are one of those soldiers, 2004, correct, right. that you were injured in Afghanistan. Yep. Um, from the time from 2004 till that program 2007 was initiated, what was in place for you to help you recover? There wasn't very much, to, to, be, to be frank and honest. Uh, I, I looked at my brother, who was also an injured member, uh, for inspiration. I looked through other people, like we have a great country and we have some really heroic people. And you look towards a Rick Hansen or a Terry Fox, those are incredible stories and what they've done regardless of their in injury. Back when I was one of the first injured in Afghanistan, um, there wasn't many services programs. There were some out there, but it was a lot for the onus of the individual to go seek those out. We've come a long ways in the last decade. But using sport, for me, my after injury was to try to be the, the same person I was post-injury as I was bef before. I ran a marathon before I was injured, so I had to go run another marathon after I was injured. I played hockey. Before I wanted to play hockey again, I golfed, but now I have more excuses. They're, they're, you have to adapt. Yeah. You know, I'm not, maybe I can't stick handle or see the whole ice like I used to, but I'm, I'm still out there doing it and I still love it. So that's all important. Have you seen since Soldier On um, got started? I mean, right now there's currently 2,000 uh, soldiers that are benefiting from this program. Have you seen that help soldiers uh, with mental and physical disabilities get back to the places that they want to be before their injuries? Well, so the, the, the number is 3,200 that we've supported oh, in the last de okay. decade. Um, and what Soldier On really does, and it's one of our strengths, is once you're injured, you're taken away from that esprit de corps and that camaraderie that you would find in a, in a platoon or a section and then you're isolated and you're told to go recover. Yeah. But a lot of people need that peer support and they need that camaraderie to, to fill in that gap. And I've, I... Not to feel uh, so alone in that, that they're the only person that's dealing with this type of thing, right? That, 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 that's exactly it. So there's, 
you know, when we do, we do allied stuff, uh, our allied camps with U United Kingdom, Australia, or when we go to Scotland with uh, St. Andrew's Legacy, um, there's other nations that are there, and it's incredible to see from day one, they are all, they have all gone through a traumatic experience in their life, and they've all served their country. So that bond is instant, and they get that esprit de corps back, they get that feeling that, you know what, my challenges aren't so different than the guy in Australia or the guy in, in, in Scotland. We all have nightmares or challenges, for example, uh, are in those dark places, and you, you, you start talking about it and saying, oh, this is what's going on in our country, this isn't, and there's so much similarities across, across the world. Um, first of all, Jaron, I know obviously today um, there was a golf tournament, but it, it, um, the program offers different outlets for sport. What are some of the things that um, people could take advantage of? We do all sport and recreation, uh, or, or sport or physical recreation. So everything from yoga to fly fishing to skiing to hockey to biathlon, horseback riding, camping, hiking, you, you name it, Soldier On does it as long as there's an interest to it. Yeah. Um, so we, we really work off the demand of the Ellen Ninja, what they're interested in. The cycling, hiking, golf, they're popular sports within the, within the program. Um, and I, I can see how they are because if you're challenged and you're stressed and, and you just need to escape, well, yeah, go hop on your bike and go for a ride or yeah. go to the golf course and, and it, it's that instant kind of, okay, I need to be alone. And I mean, for me, be, for me personally, being on the golf course is just fantastic. Like, it's so peaceful, just you and the game, and you can really focus and, and leave some of the other stuff behind. Yeah, and I understand that golf is probably one of the fastest growing um, sports that a lot of the members of Soldier On want to participate in. Why do you think golf is so popular? I think in the, in the military, there's not a lot of opportunity to golf in the younger years. And what w is unique within Soldier On is we're an a, a organization who doesn't, we, we, we serve both physical and mental health illness or injury, but we also serve both serving members and veterans. And because we're so busy at the beginning of our careers and there's not real time for golf for a lot of people, people take that up later on in their life. And because you're ill and injured, Golf is so adaptable that anybody can play it. It's one of the only sports that you can have three generations of individuals. So you can have a grandson, the, the son, and, and the grandfather all play on an equal, loving, uh, equal playing field and, and enjoy the game. And it's so adaptable, the, 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 and it's just out there. And it's not only the, the golf. It's, when we do run our soldier on camps, it's not really about the golf. It's more about not that not feeling alone and that camaraderie and that social aspect of it but uh, golf is so like anybody can play it so it's, it's fantastic yeah. have you seen um are the statistics available that programs like soldier on has it had a positive impact on diminishing suicide rates within the military we've had some feedback on on that i don't have uh statistics, hard, numbers, no. hard, hard numbers on that but we we receive uh, uh, feedback from participants on the impact. Yes, yeah, so you must get had. personal stories, right? We do. We get a lot of personal stories, and it's really rewarding. And like for, for me, going through some of that, but now I get the reward to help my brothers and sisters go through it and and go. I would never say I know the challenges they go through, but I've gone through my own, yeah. and and can relate in some fashion. Um, so w w we have have a, a, that impact. I don't have the exact statistics about it, but there it is. All, all encompassing to better the lives of the ill and injured. It's the ripple effect. Yeah. It's the effect on families. We had the best feedback is from the kids and the and the spouses and saying, oh, they thank you. They have their mom or dad back. Yeah, thanks for doing this. We're going out. And the great story is, you know, somebody sends an application for golf equipment because he, he, he just wants to go golfing with his wife or he just wants to go golfing with his kids. That's fantastic. And that's what it's all about, right, is, is making sure that, that that's there for them.